When Randy chased her out of the apartment, Emma had already entered the elevator. He took the stairs so that he could meet her down at the lobby in time. He did not even have time to catch his breath. Emma turned around when she heard someone calling her. She saw Randy running towards her while panting. Why did you come down? I don't need your help, she said. I also want to buy something so we can go together, he said. Emma rolled her eyes. She didn't need his help. But now that he was downstairs, how could she send him away? Should we call the car? He asked. It's down the street, Emma said. We can just walk. Randy nodded and followed her. Along the way to the supermarket, Randy looked left and right and asked Emma, Emma, uh, what do you want to buy? I'll go. You know how to? Do you even know how to cook? Emma asked teasingly. Randy was embarrassed. He really could not tell the difference between any of the ingredients that Emma would want. At the store, Emma found a big shopping cart and pushed it to Randy. You can help me by following with this, she said. Randy followed obediently. Emma walked through the aisles, putting items into the cart. So you return to the city to see Aiden, she asked, as she put some oranges into the shopping cart. Randy was shocked to hear her question. He had returned to see Aiden, but he had also returned to help Chris and Aiden with the issues with SA Company. He knew he couldn't tell Emma the second part of his mission. Randy hesitated. He tried to think of a way to distract her. Emma seemed to have seen through Randy's thoughts. She said lightly, You don't need to lie to me. Ah. Uh, Randy looked at Emma and answered hesitantly, Aiden has not recovered yet. I came back to help with the company matters. She nodded. Yes, thank you and Chris for your hard work. Randy shook his head. It's our duty. Emma sighed and said, It's not that I don't want him to take care of the company matters. It's just that he's still recovering, and he is likely to push himself farther than he needs and hurt himself again, she said. Randy nodded in agreement. Aiden knows that, he said. But does he? If he did, why would he have asked Chris to deliver those documents in the hospital? Randy had heard about this issue. He looked away awkwardly. In the distance, he spotted a man who looked familiar. The man was staring at Emma intently. Randy was a little startled until he focused closer on the man and realized who it was. He called out to Emma. Emma, there's Aiden's father, he said, pointing in the man's direction. Emma followed Randy's gaze and saw Bill Grant looking at her. No, he was staring at her. Why was he staring at her? Emma was a little confused. After a moment of silence, she passed the vegetable in her hand to Randy. Randy, help me find a fish. Randy nodded and put the vegetables in the shopping cart. He pushed the cart and went straight into the area where the fish were sold. Emma turned to walk toward Bill. She greeted him respectfully and nodded at the woman beside Bill. Who is that man? Bill asked. What? Emma replied. You are a pretty woman. How dare you be with another man behind Aiden's back? What are you trying to do? Bill gritted his teeth as he looked at Emma. I'm not doing anything, she said. This man works for Aiden's company. Bill's face turned red. So you are with a man from his company. That's even worse. Emma frowned. She realized that Bill was not going to listen to her. She was not in the mood to argue with him if he wasn't making sense. Sorry, I need to get back to shopping. It was good to see you, Emma said, and she turned to walk back toward Randy in the shopping cart. Bill stared at Emma's back as she left. He was so angry that the walking stick in his hand hit the ground a few times. Then he said angrily, I must tell Aiden what this woman is doing. The woman next to him tried to calm him down, but Bill pushed her away and walked out of the store. She followed him out in a hurry. Emma was distraught from her conversation with Bill, but Randy knew that she wasn't likely to want to talk about it. Bill and Aiden were estranged, and it wasn't worth getting into the mess that Bill would try to start. Randy and Emma continued to shop for their dinner. Bill left the supermarket in a rage. He was determined to go right to Aiden and report what he had seen. 
he went straight to their apartment and rang the doorbell. When the bell rang, Aiden expected that Emma had forgotten her key. He didn't expect to see his father and his father's secretary and lover standing at the door. Is something the matter? Aiden's eyes were cold, as if he was facing a stranger. Bill saw the bandage on Aiden's head and wanted to ask what had happened, but he was distracted by Aiden's cold greeting. Is that how you greet me? He said. How do you think I should greet you? Aiden responded coldly. What happened to you? Bill asked. Aiden was stunned for a moment, then he replied, There was an accident. I have something to tell you. You don't want to invite me in. Bill had lived near Aiden for eight years, but he had never come to see the apartment. Aiden was about to refuse when Wendy's voice came from inside. Daddy? Aiden turned around to walk back to Wendy, and Bill followed. After entering, his gaze swept around the apartment before landing on Wendy, who was sitting next to Aiden. He had seen Wendy a few times and knew that she was Emma's daughter. But the child had called him Daddy. Were they back together? Are you with Emma again? Bill asked. That's none of your business, Aiden replied. Bill pointed at Aiden angrily and said, What does someone else's child have to do with you? Are you stupid? Helping that slut raise her child? Who are you calling a slut? Aiden yelled. His face turned as cold as ice. Who else? Emma? And she even asked you to raise her daughter for her? Bill could not finish his sentence before Aiden yelled, Get out! Bill's face turned pale. Did that woman give you drugs? Are you trying to protect her? Do you want me to get lost? Get lost, Aiden said. Don't make me say it a third time. I am your family. This is my bloodline, not Emma. That slut and not that child, Bill said. He glared at Wendy. Wendy had shrunk back into the sofa, her eyes full of fear. Aiden saw her cowering and picked her up to comfort her. Don't cry. Daddy's here, he said as Wendy began to sob. In that moment, Emma and Randy returned to the house. Emma could hear Wendy sobbing from the entrance, and she dropped her bags and immediately rushed into the living room. She stopped suddenly when she saw Bill and his lover standing in the living room. Wendy is scared. Take her to her room, Aiden said firmly to Emma. Emma had already guessed what was going on when she saw Bill. She did not hesitate and took Wendy from Aiden's arms. She was walking away when Bill called after her to stop. Ignore him. Bring Wendy to her room, Aiden said. Emma looked down at Wendy, who was crying in her arms, and nodded. You're still trying to protect this woman? Bill shouted. Before Bill could finish his sentence, Aiden interrupted him. Shut up. It's not your turn to talk about my woman. You ungrateful son. You have this woman running around on you and you are willing to raise another man's child? Aiden's dark eyes were sinister. Just as he was about to throw Bill out, Emma spoke. Say what you want about me, but don't you dare speak about my daughter, she said. Ignore him, Emma, Aiden demanded. Don't listen to him. But Emma didn't move. Aiden, you and Wendy can do a paternity test. Aiden shook his head. It doesn't matter. Wendy is my daughter. No, Emma said firmly. We can do it. Aiden's heart ached when he saw her like this. He reached out and pulled Emma into his arms. There's no need. Wendy is my daughter and you are my woman. Emma silently shed tears and did not speak. Aiden wiped her tears and Wendy's tears and led them into Wendy's room. Bill just stood there in a daze. He was stunned. He didn't actually think that there was a chance that Wendy could be Aiden's daughter. But he had another shot coming. A few moments later, Randy entered with the bag of groceries. Emma, Aiden, where do you want these? He called out. Bill realized now the error of his assumptions. He was too embarrassed to stay in the apartment. He grabbed his lover's hand and left. Wendy had been very frightened by Bill. 
Aiden and Emma took turns coaxing her to sleep. Finally, once she fell asleep, Aiden left the room. He was furious. In the living room, Aiden spotted Randy and asked where Bill had gone. Randy was stunned for a few seconds before he realized who Aiden was talking about. He left? When did he leave? Aiden's voice was cold. Uh, just now. Before Randy could finish, Aiden rushed out. Emma came out of the room and happened to hear the conversation between Aiden and Randy. Without thinking, she shouted, Randy, stop him! Randy did not understand what had happened, but when he heard Emma's words, he immediately got up off the sofa and ran to block Aiden. Get out of the way, Aiden ordered Randy coldly. Randy's eyes narrowed. Then he looked at Emma for help. Emma ran over and grabbed Aiden's arm. Where are you going if you want Randy to get out of the way? Aiden didn't say anything. Emma pulled Aiden's arm and dragged him back into their room. After closing the door, Emma shook off Aiden's hand. Why are you so angry? Just let him be, she said. Is there a need for him to meddle in other people's business? Wendy was so frightened by him. Aiden was really angry. No one was allowed to act like that toward Emma and Wendy. It's not that serious. Wendy was just scared. She'll be okay tomorrow, Emma said. But what if she's not? He replied. She's very strong, Emma said. After a long silence, Emma saw that Aiden had calmed down a bit. He just misunderstood, she said. No matter what, he is concerned about you. Who asked him to care? Who asked him to scold you and Wendy? Aiden said. His anger was rising again. Emma decided not to mention it anymore. We don't need to discuss it. Randy should have ordered lunch. Shall we go out for lunch? They agreed to put aside the events of the morning and go to lunch. The next day, Wendy was calm and not frightened, and Emma returned to work. Before she left, she instructed Aiden to take it easy with the company matters. She knew he was going to work, but wanted to make sure he didn't exert himself. Don't worry about me. Go to the hospital, Aiden said. Unfortunately, Emma was still worried. She squatted in front of Wendy and asked seriously, Wendy, can you help Mommy look after Daddy? Wendy nodded enthusiastically. Even with Wendy keeping watch over her father... Emma still made sure to call to check in and make sure Aiden was not working too hard. Randy and Chris came by the apartment to discuss business matters so that Aiden would not have to go into the office. Chris's latest news was that the Doyle family was arranging to have Carl transferred to New York. After they discussed the Occam family, they went over plans for the SA company. Chris and Randy both took phone calls, and Aiden reviewed documents. Send me the essay stock information when you get back to the company. You don't have to come in the afternoon, he told them when they packed up to leave. As Emma had promised, there was a lunch delivery for Wendy and Aiden right on time. Emma called once again to make sure they were eating and that Aiden wasn't working too hard. It went like this for three days, until finally Emma felt confident she could check in less. She was very busy at the hospital on that day. Aiden was preparing for a video conference with the higher-ups of the LM Consortium. Chris called him not long after the meeting. There were a few documents that Aiden needed to sign. Because he and Randy were having a meeting, he asked his secretary to send them over. But instead, Aiden insisted that he go into the building himself to sign the contracts. He hadn't been to the company in more than a month. He asked Wendy if she wanted to leave the house to play with her father and when she agreed, he packed them both up to leave for the day. At Aiden's office, Sarah, one of the senior secretaries, was training a new receptionist, Liz. So, does he ever come into the office? Liz asked excitedly. Sarah rolled her eyes. It doesn't matter. I know what you're thinking, and he's with someone. That can't be true, Liz said. I've heard he's the most eligible bachelor in the city. That's just a rumor. Aiden was married a long time ago. Sarah looked at her new colleague and shook her head. She then continued with her work. Well, how's their marriage? Do I have a chance? Liz asked. Sarah put down the pen in her hand and turned to her seriously. 
She is a very good person. She... At this point, her voice stopped, and then she stood up. What? Liz looked up in confusion and followed Sarah's line of sight. There were two people walking into the entrance, a man and a small child. Liz immediately recognized who the man must be. She cried out in surprise. Aiden seemed to have heard her voice. He looked in her direction, then led Wendy into his private elevator. When the elevator door closed, Liz said excitedly, Did you see that? He just looked at me. Are you kidding? That's useless. He's already married and has a child, Sarah said. So what if he has a child? I don't have a chance. The child is already so old, so I figure his wife is too, Liz said. Sarah rolled her eyes and delivered the news to the secretaries in the company that Aiden was in the building. When Randy and Chris heard, they immediately went to Aiden's office. I'm going to the suburbs after I sign those documents, Aiden said. He was referring to the housing development where Carl Ockham was being kept at the moment. Chris called his secretary to bring the documents in. After Aiden approved them, he instructed Randy to stay for a meeting and Chris to join them in the suburbs. Randy's face turned bitter when he heard that. Why can I not come to the suburbs as well? Ever since he returned to New York, he had been having all kinds of meetings and dealing with all kinds of documents. He really wanted a day outside of the office. Aiden tilted his head and looked at him. Then, he said, Well, can you watch Wendy? Randy groaned. He knew that Wendy preferred Chris and that she wasn't likely to spend time with him without having a fit when Aiden left. So much for his attempt to go to the suburbs. Hearing Aiden's words, Randy immediately became listless. Wendy didn't even let him get close, so how could he bring the baby with him? Chris reached out and patted Randy's shoulder. Have a good meeting. I'm going out to play. You win, Randy said. He glumly watched Chris and Aiden leave. Chris joined Aiden and Wendy in Lee's car for the drive out to the suburbs. They reached a large parking lot near a development that was under construction. Aiden left Wendy with Chris in the car and walked toward one of the in-progress homes with Lee. How has he been since you brought him here? Aiden asked. He was rough at the beginning, but he's been behaving himself in the past few days, Lee answered. Lee led Aiden into the living room of one of the homes, and then up the stairs to a bedroom. He's inside, Lee said. Aiden didn't say anything. He just signaled for him to open the door. Carl was lying on the bed in the room. He had lost a lot of weight since his arrest, and he looked tired and worn out. He jumped up from the bed when the door opened. When he saw Aiden standing at the door of the room, his eyes shrank. Aiden? Is, is that you? What do you think? Aiden asked. He slowly walked in and sat down on the chair Lee had prepared for him. Carl stared at Aiden for a few seconds, then shook his head. I underestimated your ability. Which ability? Let me guess. To be able to thwart all of your father's attempts to use his politics to move you? To take you from one prison out to New York? Carl had realized that someone was behind his transfer from the prison to this suburb, but he hadn't imagined that Aiden possibly had this much more power. I have the ability, but it seems your father still doesn't understand that, Aiden said. He's now attacking me out of humiliation. Carl laughed when he heard Aiden's words. Aiden, he said, are you here to beg me? Aiden looked at Carl and smiled. When Carl was done laughing, he said, You think too much. I'm not here to beg you. I'm here to tell you that I'm going to let your father die with the entire essay. Carl was stunned. Then he realized what was going on. He turned to Aiden and asked, Aiden, who do you think you are? You are just an ant, a peasant. Is that so? Aiden did not even look at him. He stood up and said, Then I will let you see how I, a peasant, will play the essay to death. Aiden's voice was very soft but menacing. 
Carl's eyes blurred as he watched Aiden slowly leave the room. When Carl had first met him, Aiden had appeared so high and mighty, like a king, and Carl was unable to accept his failure and had kidnapped Aiden's woman and child. Now Aiden was ready for revenge. Could he really destroy S.A. Company? Carl couldn't bear to think about it too much. As soon as Aiden left home, he got a call from Emma. Where did you go? She asked when he answered. How would Emma know that he had left the house? He was worried she had gotten home early. You came back. I'm stepping out for a bit. Aiden said uneasily. Did you go to the company? Emma asked. She didn't seem upset. Aiden let out a sigh of relief. He was afraid that Emma would flip out. No, I just wanted to run an errand. I wanted to get some of the soda you had bought before. Are you coming back for lunch? She asked. I'll be right back, he said. Okay, she replied. Be careful on the road. Aiden put the phone back in his pocket and walked toward Wendy, who was playing with Chris in the field next to the parking lot. Wendy, Mommy is waiting for us at home. We should go back. Wendy happily got down from Chris's arms and ran towards Aiden. Chris also came over. Emma didn't go back home early, did she? He asked. Aiden shook his head. We have another issue. The headquarters of the consortium needs a person on the ground in Germany, he said. Chris knew that Aiden was implying that Chris would take on that role. Aiden couldn't move now. Aiden was certain that Chris would take it, because Emma had informed him that Queenie would be moving to Germany for school. If Queenie left, how could Chris not follow her obediently? All of this was carefully plotted, without Chris even realizing. Lee dropped Chris off at the office and drove Wendy and Aiden back to the apartment. When they got there, Emma was already cooking lunch. Do you need any help? he asked. Emma shook her head. Chris asked whether or not you had gotten home before me, he said. I think he was worried that you were going to be angry at me, Aiden said teasingly. Emma blushed. She was embarrassed to know that they had discussed how strict she was with Aiden. Aiden took two steps forward and hugged her from behind. Then he whispered into her ear, Don't worry, I've already taught him a lesson for you. Huh? Emma turned her head to look at Aiden. The LM Consortium needs someone in Germany from the company. I'm going to let Chris go, he said. Won't that be for a while? You want Chris to go? Emma asked. She was surprised. She had known Aiden for so long, but she had never seen Chris leave his side. Usually it was Randy who handled overseas placements. Aiden raised his hand and touched Emma's cheek and then said, Didn't you say Queenie was going to Germany to study? Emma understood that Aiden was going to bring Chris and Queenie together. With their current situation, do you think that's a good idea? Emma did not say the rest, but Aiden understood what it meant. There are some things that cannot only be seen on the surface, Aiden said ambiguously. The next day, Aiden moved forward with the plan to take over the SA company. Chris had prepared all of the information about the shareholders for the company. He went through and pointed out all the individuals who had historically supported Lane, and all of those who had historically supported Watt. There were two names on the list who maintained a neutral stance. Chris pointed at them and smiled. They have always been on good terms with each other. However, they are going to break the balance, he said. Break because of the fight between Lane and Watt? Aiden immediately understood what Chris meant. Yes, Lane said he would give them a big gift. When he said the word, big gift, Chris smiled mysteriously. What is a big gift? Aiden asked. Chris smiled and said, SG Enterprises. The corner of Aiden's mouth curled into a cold smile. Do you think the Watt family will want to fight Lane to the death if they know about this secret? The Watt family will definitely look for revenge, Chris answered. Aiden nodded. Well then, inform the Watts as soon as possible. Two days later, there was an important meeting for the SA company. Because of the struggles of the Watt family, 
there was an emergency gathering to determine the next steps to keep the SA company successful, despite the losses of those in control of the organization. The people representing the Watts were despondent, while those associated with Lane were ecstatic. The two neutral members who had avoided siding with either family were also sitting in on the meeting. As long as the Watts side signed the equity transfer agreement, the entire SA was going to belong to Lane family. Watt, hand over the shares, Lane said. Watt looked at him and said, Sorry, I don't have any shares anymore. I came here today to watch the show. Watt, what do you mean you don't want to hand over your shares? Suddenly there was an urgent knock on the door. Lane's assistant rushed in, sweaty and distraught. Director? What's the matter? Lane asked. A lot of shares have appeared on the market. Hearing his assistant's words, Lane felt dizzy. What, you idiot, what did you do? But Watt was very happy. Lane, you and I have fought for so many years. I failed today, but I will not let you get any benefits. You are crazy. Do you know what 30% of the shares represents? Lane roared in a low voice. It means you will get out of this position. Even if they help you, it will be useless. Watt pointed at the two shareholders, who had been historically neutral, who Lane had promised the entire SG Enterprises. How do you know? Lane was surprised. Shouldn't I know that those two swindlers are working with you? Watt said. Watt had lost today, but at least he had guaranteed that Lane would lose too. Watt got up from his seat and glared at his rival. Lane, you're just going to have to think of a way to buy all the shares back. Otherwise, the SA will belong to someone else. The same day, an LM consortium meeting was taking place. Chris and Aiden were silently following along, until Aiden interrupted the discussion. Please take a look at the documents I just sent you, he said. There was a hush as people opened their phones and computers to review the information. Once people began to read through the documents, there were a few gasps. Right now, most of the shares of the SA are in the hands of Lane family. Watt has offloaded much of his. We just need to wait for the SA partners to withdraw their investments. And then wait quietly and buy all of the shares back, he said. The LM consortium representatives were silent with awe. Aiden was going to have them diminish the SA company and then let LM become the savior of the SA? Within a month, I want this to be finished, Aiden said firmly. He then got up from his seat, leaving the video conference. On the screen, Chris could see the LM consortium members looking at each other in confusion. Chris sighed and kindly reminded them. He means that within a month, the SA will become LM. He could hear the consortium members exclaiming after he announced this. Not only was Aiden primed to defeat SA Company, but he was also about to have the LM Consortium do all of his bidding and working to take down his rivals. Chris couldn't help but gaze at the representatives on the other side of the call with some sympathy. They had no idea what Aiden was capable of, and no idea how much he had planned. Chris concluded the meeting, dismissed the representatives, and then logged out of the meeting. He left the office. When he walked out, Aiden was waiting for him. So is that what you expected? Aiden asked. Chris smiled bitterly. Aiden knew him well. I was surprised, Chris replied. You're right. If you're not surprised, where else can you find joy? Aiden smiled coldly. Chris knew that Aiden was ready to make a pretty big move. Do we need to talk to John about this? He asked. I'll talk to him, Aiden replied. He didn't need to fill him in on the everyday comings and goings of the LM Consortium, but he would tell him about major personnel moves, like Chris going to Germany. Chris was about to bring something else up when they heard a crying from the other room. Daddy! Wendy sobbed. Aiden and Chris rushed toward Wendy. She was sitting on the bed and crying. Daddy is here, 
Don't cry, Wendy, Aiden said as he hugged her. After he comforted her for a while, her crying gradually subsided. Is she doing better? Chris asked worriedly. We thought so, Aiden said, but I know that there was a doctor that Emma had been in touch with in Germany as well, so maybe it's time to do that. I should talk to Emma about a time to go over. Randy and I can handle things if you need to do that, Chris said. Don't worry about the company. Just focus on Wendy. Later that night, Aiden told Emma about Wendy's crying. He knew that Dr. Tally, who Emma had been in touch with right after the accident, had moved to Germany recently. I'll contact Dr. Tally, Emma said. She pulled out her phone and sent a few texts, then announced that Dr. Tally would be able to video call with them then. She brought her laptop to the sofa and placed it on the coffee table in front of them. In seconds, they could see Dr. Tally on the other side of the screen. Dr. Turner, how are you? How is Wendy doing? Dr. Tally asked. She's doing better, but she's still having a lot of issues with outsiders, and sometimes with outbursts. I'd possibly recommend hypnosis in a case like this, Dr. Tally said. If you're willing, I'd suggest traveling to come to do the treatment directly with me. After chatting for a bit longer, Emma and Dr. Tally ended the call. Aiden had remained silent for much of the conversation. Once the computer was closed, he turned to Emma and said seriously, So, when do we go to Germany? Do you have time for that? Emma asked. She looked at Aiden strangely. Yes, I do. He replied. The SA company was settled, and with Randy and Chris's help, he'd be able to leave work for several days. I have some surgeries to complete, but I think that I should be able to arrange for us to leave within the next few weeks, she said. Emma's workload had been overwhelming now that she was back full time and no longer caring for Aiden as much, but he was just starting to get back to normal. Both Aiden and Emma knew that traveling to Germany on such short notice would take some rearranging of their schedules, but Dr. Tally was the best in her field and they would stop at nothing to help Wendy recover. Meanwhile, the SA company was tanking. The partners were withdrawing funds and the projects were being frozen. No matter how much money that Lane and his family had, they couldn't seem to hold up against this bottomless hole. He began to make phone calls one by one to his former partners and companions who had now turned against him. When people ignored his calls, he took to his private jet and began to travel around the world, confronting his former partners. Finally, he went to visit his old friend Jay, the CEO of Ford and one of SA's biggest partners. Jay welcomed him into his home reluctantly. They sat in Jay's expansive backyard, and Lane begged for his cooperation. Jay, keep your funds in. Keep working with us. I'll rise your rate to 10% of the profits. How does that sound? Is it likely there will be that many profits? Jay asked. We've been friends for many years. Are you not willing to help? Lane asked. Lane frowned. Before Jay could respond, Lane's assistant rushed over with his phone. He wordlessly showed Lane something on the screen. Lane almost fainted. The stock prices were falling even more. Lane got up to leave. There was nothing anyone could do for him here. Jay stopped him. Lane, do you know why everyone suddenly withdrew their funds? I don't know. Lane looked at him in surprise. Do you? Jay was silent for a few seconds before he said, The LM Consortium sent a message. All the partners in the SA have withdrawn their funds. If anyone does not withdraw their funds in private, the SA will be an example. The LA Consortium? Lane was even more shocked this time. When did he provoke the LM Consortium? I don't know anyone from LM Consortium, he said. Jay shook his head. Think about it. Did you offend the people of the LM Consortium? It seems like they are directly targeting the SA company. I don't know anyone from the LM Consortium, Lane exclaimed. Jay sighed and said, If that's the case, you should find director from the LM Consortium. How can I find him? I don't even know him. 
Lane said. Lane returned to his private jet that afternoon dejected. The situation was even worse than what he had seen when his assistant interrupted him. The stock prices continued to fall. The SA shareholders were already desperately selling their shares. Lane was powerless. The initial investments were going down the drain, and then SA Company was being held accountable for breach of contract and bank loans. They could only watch as the SA shares plummeted all the way to the lowest point in history. Lane had no choice but to sell. He did not know that he had fallen into the pit that Aiden had dug for him. Emma rearranged her schedule to fit in as much work as possible to prepare to go to Germany. On her last surgery of the day, she suddenly felt dizzy and asked for someone to step in. Emma rushed out of the operating theater and into the bathroom where she threw up. A nurse was waiting for her outside to make sure she was okay. Dr. Turner, are you okay? Emma turned on the tap and washed her face. It's okay. I think I've been tired for the past few days. You need to rest. You have been working for ten days straight, the nurse said. I'll page Dr. Kenzie to step in on this surgery as soon as possible. Emma nodded and walked back to her office. She felt weak. She called Aiden as soon as she sat down. Hi. My surgery ended early, she said. But before she could finish her sentence, Emma had to throw up again. Aiden suddenly could not hear Emma's voice and shouted anxiously, What's wrong? Where are you now? He heard Emma vomiting in the background. Are you sick? I'll come pick you up right away, he said. No need, I'm just too tired. I'll take Lee's car back after I rest for a while, Emma said. I'll pick you up, Aiden said. Then he called to Wendy. Aiden, don't come over here with the baby. Really, I'll rest for a while. Before Emma could finish her sentence, Aiden said, I'll be right there. After that, he hung up the phone. Emma knew that he had already made up his mind to come, so she waited in the office for him. She was so tired, she fell asleep. When Aiden arrived, he found her office door was locked. There was a light coming from under the door, but no sound. He called her and heard her phone ring inside the room, but she didn't answer. She might have fallen asleep. He did not want to disturb Emma's rest. He called Benny to ask whether there were any spare keys. Benny was in a meeting, but he said he would check with the receptionists. Benny got to Emma's room as quick as he could. He unlocked the door, and when Aiden saw Emma asleep at her desk, he breathed a sigh of relief. Benny poked his head in to see what was happening, but as soon as he did, Aiden glared at him. I was just making sure that everything is okay, Benny said. Aiden gestured to the spare key in Benny's hand. Benny obediently walked toward Aiden and handed it to him. I'm glad I could help, he said. I need to go back to a meeting. Benny rushed away from the office. Aiden watched him go, then led Wendy into the room. After Aiden entered Emma's office, he did not wake her up. Instead, he covered her with a blanket and waited for her quietly with Wendy. They waited for a full hour until Emma awoke. When she opened her eyes, she saw Aiden sitting on the couch with Wendy in his arms. When did you come? Why didn't you wake me up? Emma exclaimed. Her voice was a little hoarse because she had just woken up. Not long ago. How do you feel? Aiden put Wendy down and asked. I feel much better. Emma said as she removed the blanket from her body. She stood up and began to unbutton her doctor's coat. Aiden stood up as well and pulled her pea coat off the hanger nearby and handed it to her, then hung her white coat up by her bookshelf. He picked up the bag on Emma's desk in one hand and held Wendy. He stared at Emma kindly. Let's go home, he said. Emma smiled and grabbed the bag from his hand. She insisted on carrying it out even though she was weak. I may have to work from my study when we get home, Aiden said. Do you want to order takeout? Emma nodded. He had driven himself, so when they got in the car, he took the driver's seat and Emma sat next to him, silently placing the order. When she was done, she put her phone back in her bag. 
What time is the plane tomorrow? She asked. At night, Aiden said, turning the steering wheel. What's wrong? He asked. Emma was silent for a moment before she said, Let's have lunch together with my parents tomorrow afternoon. Sure. After a few seconds, Aiden added, That will work well because I also have to tell your father about the consortium. Emma nodded and asked, Should we eat out or at home? Aiden answered without thinking, At home. Yes, I'll call mom and tell her. Emma pulled her phone back out to call Nancy. He listened as she chatted about the plans for the next day and about Aiden's health. Aiden could tell that his in-laws were concerned about him, and it made him feel cared for and loved. He felt grateful for Nancy and John and how they treated him. Emma and Nancy talked all the way until Aiden parked the car, and when they got to their apartment, the food was already waiting outside their door. Aiden went into his study after taking just a few quick bites of food, and Emma sent out the meal for her and Wendy. When they were done, she bathed Wendy and then read her books until she fell asleep. In the living room, she sat down on the sofa and turned on her laptop to check in with Dr. Tally once more. Then she turned on the television. She made sure that the volume was very low so she would not disturb Aiden. She knew that he was supposed to have a video conference with Chris. She did not want to go in and disturb him, but she was worried that he would be hungry if he did not eat anything for dinner. After a while, Aiden finally walked out of the study. Emma was asleep by the time he came out. He came over to her and began to pick her up to take her to bed. But she woke up as soon as he touched her. Aiden, are you done with your work? Are you hungry? I'll make you something to eat, she said. She struggled to get up from Aiden's arms and hurried to the kitchen. She was clearly very tired and sleepy, but she forced herself to wait for him so that she could make him something to eat. It's okay, Emma, he said gently. Let's just go to sleep. He led her upstairs, and they went to bed. The next morning, Aiden went to dress Wendy because Emma was still asleep. Daddy, why is Mommy still sleeping? Wendy asked. She's very tired, so we're going to let her sleep, okay? He said. Aiden left a note in the living room for Emma that they had gone out to get food for lunch with Nancy and John. They went to the grocery, and when they got back, the house was quiet. Aiden realized that Emma must still be asleep. He took the food out of the shopping bag and began to put items away, and set aside what he needed for cooking. Soon the doorbell rang, and Aiden left the kitchen to answer the door. Nancy and John were waiting outside. He invited them in. After they greeted him and Wendy, Nancy asked for Emma. She's still asleep, Aiden said. Asleep? Why didn't you wake her up? She asked. She has been working for ten days straight with four surgeries a day. She is really tired, Aiden said. How can she be so busy? Does she need more doctors? Nancy asked. They should be looking for more staff if she's working so much. No, she's been working this schedule because we wanted to bring Wendy to Germany soon, and Emma wanted to finish all of her scheduled surgeries before she did. Nancy and John nodded. Aiden led them to the living room so they could sit and enjoy tea while he finished preparing the meal. But Nancy only sat for a few minutes before she insisted on helping Aiden. You've only just recovered. Let me help, she said. John stood up as well. No, no, you stay with Wendy. Aiden and I will go into the kitchen. Nancy agreed. A few minutes later, Emma came out of her room. She was surprised to see her mother. Why are you here so early? She asked. Nancy rolled her eyes. It's almost lunchtime. It's not early. Emma turned to look at the clock on the wall. It was already 11.30. Why didn't Aiden call me? Emma said. He did not want to wake you up. He did not even want me to call you, Nancy said. He said you needed to rest. I didn't know how many surgeries you were doing. Where's Dad? Emma asked. Oh, he's in the kitchen, Nancy replied. Emma nodded and sat down next to her mother. Nancy lowered her voice. Are you taking the baby to Germany for her health? She asked. Yes, Emma said. She looked over at Wendy, who was playing with the doll on the other side of the sofa. That's good, Nancy replied. 
it's better for you to look into it now instead of later. When are you flying? Tonight, Emma replied. Do you know where you're staying? Nancy asked. Without waiting for Emma to answer, Nancy said again, Why don't you just stay with Queenie? Emma thought for a few seconds and shook her head. Aiden has arranged something. It's better for us to have our own place. In the kitchen, Aiden and John were discussing business. I'm worried about your health. Can you still handle all of this? John asked. Aiden was stunned for a moment and replied, I'm feeling back to normal. And with Chris and Randy's help, I'm able to get everything done. Especially when Emma is urging me to rest. That's good, John nodded, and continued to prepare the soup that he was handling. There is something I need to tell you, Aiden said. If it has to do with the consortium, you can do whatever you want. You don't need to tell me, John replied. Aiden shook his head. You have to know. John raised his eyebrows and answered casually, Tell me about it. There may be a big transition of personnel in the consortium, Aiden said. John seemed shocked for a moment. The senior executives of the consortium are all old. They have been in the consortium for a long time. <laughs> They've been around for a while and they may have certain ways of doing things. It is possible that you will find some resistance in your changes, but I trust you. Do what you need to do. Aiden thanked him. With John's approval, he felt much more at ease. I will support you no matter what you do, John said. The two of them continued to cook. John was preparing the soup very quickly, and then he moved on to the salad. When Aiden came out to tell Nancy and Wendy that lunch was ready, he was surprised to see that Emma was also awake. You're up? he asked. Yes. Did you cook lunch or... Did my dad cook it? Emma asked. Your dad made most of it. I just helped, he replied. It's been a long time since I tasted my dad's cooking, Emma said. She began to set the table, and Wendy followed her and helped with the napkins and the silverware. Nancy went into the kitchen to help prepare the dishes for serving. After lunch, Nancy and John stayed to chat for a while before leaving. After they left... Aiden picked up his phone and entered the study. Emma pulled out their suitcases to begin packing. They would be gone for less than two weeks, but they still needed a lot for themselves and for Wendy. While she was packing, Chris stopped by to chat with Aiden for 30 minutes. After Chris left, Aiden came out of the study. I'll likely have to do some work in Germany, Aiden said. Emma nodded. Well, then you can just pack it, she said lightly. They needed to be at the airport more than two hours before departure because it was an international flight, but they were running late when they left the apartment. Luckily, they made it in time to check their bags and to rest in the lounge before boarding. When they landed the next morning in Frankfurt, they were exhausted. Emma had been so distracted by the travel, she had forgotten to ask Aiden where they were staying. But after they got through customs and got their bags, he directed them to a waiting car which drove them to a rental apartment, just a few blocks from Dr. Tally's office. How did you find this place? Emma asked. There's so much assistance here. There was a private butler, babysitter, and maids for all floors of the apartment. Rex owns it. I asked if it was being rented out, and when he said no, I arranged for us to stay here. Do you want someone to bring lunch? He asked. I'm not hungry. Is Wendy hungry? Emma turned to look at Wendy. Wendy didn't speak. She seemed to be jet-lagged from the flight. Let's go upstairs and get settled, Emma said. We need to rest. She brought Wendy into her room and settled her into bed. Then Aiden led her into the main bedroom. He began to unpack as Emma looked around. This room looks familiar, she said. Have I seen it before? Maybe they filmed something here, Aiden suggested but would they have had the Johansson family crest on the TV, Emma said. She pointed to a crest that was engraved in the side of the bed. Aiden was stunned for a moment. Then he recalled that when the operation had occurred in secret, Emma had been involved in the scandal between Alicia and Peter. Huh, maybe in one of the other Johansson houses, Aiden suggested. But suddenly Emma turned to him. I remember. It was with Alicia and Peter. 
The video you sent was filmed here. She was trying to remember how the video was taken. Was it taken while he was lying down? If so, why? She remembered Dr. Lee saying that Aiden was involved in a major surgery five years ago. The success rate was only 50%. Emma now knew that she had connected the whole thing together. This was about the leg surgery, right? She asked. Aiden nodded. Why didn't you tell me? Rex knew. Chris knew. Why didn't I know? Do you think I don't deserve to know? Emma asked. Aiden quickly answered, No, you deserved to know. Emma knew that she was about to get to the truth. Why did he keep the surgery a secret? What was the truth? Emma took a step closer to Aiden. Then why? Aiden did not say anything. Emma pursed her lips and said, Well, if you won't tell me, I can ask Rex. I can ask Dr. Lee. I can ask Chris. Aiden interrupted her. The success rate of the surgery was less than 50%. I knew that I risked being paralyzed, and I knew that I risked death. She had never understood why he treated her so coldly during that period of time. Now she realized he was driving her away so that she would not risk being hurt by his death. Are you stupid? What if you really chased me away? She yelled. Emma threw herself into Aiden's arms. He held her as she scolded him. The next morning, Emma and Aiden brought Wendy to Dr. Tally's private center. After they talked to the front desk staff, a nurse brought them through a big room filled with flowers and then to Dr. Tally's office. There was no medical equipment in the room, no desk and no white coat. There was a table and a chair against the wall. In the middle of the room, there were three sofas and a coffee table. It was very simple. On one of the sofas sat a woman in her fifties. She wore a light dress. When they entered, she immediately stood up and went to hug Emma. Hello, how are you? How was your journey? She asked. It was fine, Emma said, smiling. Dr. Tally, this is Aiden. Hello. Although Aiden's tone was cold, he was very polite. Hello. Dr. Tally gave Aiden a friendly smile and turned her gaze to Wendy. Hello. My name is Tally. Dr. Tally's voice was gentle. Hello. Although Wendy was a little timid, this was the first time she had been so friendly to strangers after the kidnapping. Tally smiled and said to Wendy, You can call me Grandma Tally. Hello, Grandma Tally. Good girl. What's your name? My name is Wendy. Wendy, let's draw a picture, okay? Wendy nodded obediently. Dr. Tally passed a piece of white paper and a watercolor pen to her. Wendy started to draw on the white paper. Dr. Tally did not look at what Wendy was looking at, but instead chatted with Emma. So, I heard that you are at a new hospital. It's interesting you chose to stay in New York. I hear that you had some competitive offers from California and even from European universities, she said. That's true, Emma said, but my family is in New York. When Emma mentioned family, she turned her eyes to Aiden. Aiden reached out to hold her hand. Emma and Tally chatted for a while as Wendy drew. Finally, she told the adults that she was done drawing. There were three people drawn on the painting. It was obvious that they were Wendy, Emma, and Aiden. There was another thing in the painting. It was an animal. A wolf. Tally stared at the painting for a while and then said with a smile, Wendy's drawing is really good. What do you want Grandma Tally to reward you with? Wendy hesitated for a while before replying, I want a Barbie doll. Oh, so Wendy likes Barbie dolls the most? Dr. Tally reached behind her, then took out a new Barbie doll from the back of the sofa. This is a gift for Wendy. Thank you, Wendy said, and she happily hugged the Barbie doll. Tally smiled and replied, You're welcome. Wendy went to play with the Barbie doll by herself, as Tally and Emma kept chatting. About 30 minutes later, Dr. Tally walked over to Wendy. Wendy, can you help Grandma Tally go to the flower room outside to pick a flower? She asked. Wendy did not speak or move. 
Emma was just about to say something when Tally interrupted her. Wendy, can you and Daddy help Grandma Tally pluck a flower? Okay. This time, Wendy nodded. Tally looked at Aiden. Aiden nodded and squatted down to pick Wendy up. Wendy wrapped her arms around Aiden's neck and let Aiden carry her out of Dr. Tally's office. After they left, Dr. Tally took out Wendy's drawing again. Dr. Emma, look at Wendy's drawing. She drew Daddy and Mommy and also drew an animal. This is a wolf, a fierce wolf. It also represents the shock she received that day. She is still very afraid, so she cannot leave Daddy and Mommy's side. Also, just now, I asked her to help me pick roses. She did not go alone. She wanted someone to accompany her, which shows fear. Emma nodded and then asked, So what is the prognosis? Must she be hypnotized? She's too young and is not suitable to be hypnotized, Dr. Tally said. She wanted to use a conservative treatment method first. Emma nodded and then asked, How long will it take? Dr. Tally shook her head. I can't be certain. Tomorrow you can bring Wendy back at the same time. Just as Dr. Tally finished speaking, Aiden brought Wendy in. In Wendy's hand was a purple iris. Wendy did not speak. She silently handed the flower to Dr. Tally. Thank you, Wendy. Tally took the flowers and smelled them. She then raised her hand to touch Wendy's head. Wendy did not flinch. Instead, she said, You're welcome. Wendy will come back tomorrow to help Grandma Tally pick flowers, okay? Okay. Wendy nodded obediently. After they left Dr. Tally's mental clinic, they got into the car and went back to their residence. Just as they got in, Aiden's phone rang. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.